So this is where it all began really, on uh, Louse Road, the street opposite the Sun and Doves. And um, I lived in South East London and thought, there's something wrong here. All well, my background was in catering, all together, in the West End. And I was living in the South East London for the first time, instead of living in the, in the West End socially. And I knew there were no decent pubs, bars, restaurants, cafes or anything in the area. And thought this could be an opportunity to, uh, to do something about that. So I started making inquiries about the pub and found out that it was just about to be marketed by a company called Entrepreneur as a, as a tied lease. And um, I wrote a business plan, raised some money, and uh, nearly a year later signed a lease. And um, that was 16 and a half years ago now. And there it is, boarded up. So I knew it was a tired pub, and um, I was very suspicious of that coming from a background in catering where the tide was just an alien thing altogether. And I, uh, I did a lot of research. I met, I, it, was, it was marketed by a company called Entrepreneur, um, who subsequently was split up and became Punch and Enterprise and Scottish Newcastle, all kinds of others. And um, so I, I went to en uh, entre Entrepreneur lessees existing at the time. One said, you've got to be really on top of product supply um, and your, and your, your, your retail margins. Um, and anyway, uh, I subsequently realised that with the fullness of time that they, uh, they were all just being polite and they weren't saying how actually difficult it is to make uh, a, a decent margin out of the tied prices. I suppose over the 16 years of having the pub, we, um, you know, like all businesses that have run that time, you have peaks and troughs. But I think initially when the pub first opened, um, it didn't take long for it to be very successful, um, you know, tripling the, the turnover of the pub that had been there before. You know, turning over sort of, um, I think at its peak, probably three quarters of a million pounds, which is a pretty damn good turnover for a pub that was doing nothing when it was taken on. I got an opportunity to, uh, we were approached by Punch Taverns with a view to running a, a pub. Uh, they got my CV off the internet and they, um, they, they asked me if I was interested. And at the time it was quite convenient for us to pursue it. We were um, uh, just being made redundant, very fed up in the industry I was working. We knew of the pub, being familiar with the area. Um, we also knew it had a very poor reputation when it was very run down. There was a lot of promise of investment, which, which it needed because it was in a, a very poor state. Uh, and uh, very naively, we, um, we, were tr we trusted in what we were told. In expecting the tide to be ending on my, my pub in 1998, I set about making it as busy as I could, and then uh, and I did. I spent about 75,000 quid on the place, which wasn't enough, really needed a quarter of a million pounds, I couldn't raise that kind of money. Constantly reinvesting all the profit that we were making at the time back into the business to try to make it busier, to try to improve it and so on. It's a constant rolling thing like this. And then um, as, as time progressed, uh, it's a very long story, I took on another lease, another lease with the same company um, and uh, there were a long series of complicated uh, problems and realities. They blackmailed me in deciding a deed of variation on this pub um, by saying that they would give me, give me an eviction notice on the other pub because it wasn't on a, long, uh, on a substantive lease. So I signed a deed of variation thinking I wonder what this would happen, what, what this would lead to. And what it led to was a life of um, being tied forever. Um, we were tied to, um, we were tied to all, all the beers. Um, we were free of tie on wines and, and spirits. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we, we took it on, on the basis that the punch we're going to be spending £180,000 on it, which it clearly needed. Um, we were in within about three months of being in the pub, um, already developing it, doing quite well, a uh, good response from, from, from the start. We, uh, we were told that that, uh, that refurbishment had been pulled. We're in the Eagle Ale House. Uh, we are probably now a specialist ale micro sieva beer pub. 
Um, we've, uh, I've been here for approximately 15 years. Uh, Simon and I took the lease of the pub just over six years ago now, I think. The idea of a, a partnership between the pub company and their lessees is, is a bit of a figment of uh, most people's imagination. Um, it'll be uh, claimed that there are various um, commercial or financial advantages to being a tied tenant, or tied lessee, should I say. Um, we're aware of none, really. <laughs> and, um, there is there is things like a, a, a free rating advisory service. Um, that's something that a lessee might use every five years. Um, probably save them a couple of hundred quid a year overall. And you need to see a, a much bigger um, countervailing benefit for the uh, disadvantage of having to buy the beer for sometimes as much as twice as much as the free open market price. You're looking at a very small profitability at the end of your profit and loss sheet for pubs. And that's where your income, that's where your personal income is supposed to come from. Well, as your margins get eroded at the top, at the top end, you know, your, your own income is being affected. And whilst you were paying everyone, you know, their wages each week, what were you taking home? Well, £100 if you were lucky. You know, it's... But the idea was that it was your business. Now, you can go with that for a period of time, a long period of time. In fact, you know, 16 years period of time. But there comes a point where it's just not sustainable. You need to plan for your future, your, your, your retirement. And it was so ironic because you had this pub that could be packed and people just didn't understand. And that's, that's the interesting idea. Something I learned the other day, and it was about cash flow and profitability, and that one can happen without the other. And sometimes when you have incredible cash flow, your business just isn't profitable at all and will never be. And cash flow can kill you, particularly if your margins are so small. And I think that's the problem with the model. There's no, it's not an equitable share in that profitability. Most of it sits on the side of the pub co and not enough on the side of the landlord. I was given as part of my rental review a list of Punch Tavern's pubs, which was used to show that I was on what they described as a good deal, because my turnover was higher than everybody else's on that list, and my rent was lower. So simplistically, Punch said, you must be doing, you must be you know, making money, because look, you're much better off than everybody else. And actually what I did straight away was to go around and visit everybody else on that list, and I discovered out of those 18 pubs, every single one bar three we're on the verge of going bust. It started to become clear fairly early on that the relationship wasn't quite as I imagined it when uh, my area manager at the time in about 1997, following a review which the pub had had <coughs> in the trade press, in the, in the pub trade press, which said that um, it said in passing that in the summer it was doing around about £20,000 a week worth of trade. He turned up and said, I saw your, um, saw your article in The Publican, very interesting. Um, and he rubbed his hands together and said, we'll be looking for a six-figure sum at the next rent review then. People make the accusation, well, you know, you signed the lease, you, you know, you just knew what you were signing up to. Uh, yes, I had some sympathy for that argument, but at the end of the day, no one in their right minds could ever foresee what private equity pub company ownership would be about. You know, no one could see that they would actively seek to put the publicans out of business with massive hikes in beer. I mean, our beer prices are here increased 72% uh, over inflation over seven years. You know, that's not something that anyone would think was a sensible business route to take with your so-called partners, be it lessees or tenants. Tonight we're opening the, uh, our new pub, which is the Boat Inn. Uh, it is uh, 
uh, very close to us in the rising sun. It's far enough that it's not competition, it's close enough so that we can support it. Um, it's um, a little bit smaller than the rising sun, but it is obviously a free house, so it gives us a lot more opportunity to, to make a, a little bit of money. Um, it's a, a community pub uh, with uh, a strong tourism edge, very similar to the rising sun. We're very excited about it, um, and uh, you know we're just we're just really looking forward to getting down and getting the, getting the opening night going. <laughs> So here we are at a very busy pub and it's free of time and it's the first night and it's fantastic, a great atmosphere and you know, as you can see people are really enjoying it and this is Dave's um, launch into a, into a new world. I think it's absolutely great that this pub has been sold as a free house. It's, gone, it's been sold away from Punch Taverns, it's been sold away from the City of London. It's now a proper pub. We can all enjoy it. The, the, the beer prices should be reasonable. The rent should be reasonable. It, it should work as a local pub. Well, it is good for the community. We have missed uh, coming in, in here because it's been closed for a few months now and, and it is great to come in and meet up with your friends again. It's been a, it's been a pretty successful night. We've had a lot of good feedback and uh, you know, it's just moving on from here really. I think we've made a lot of new friends, which is important. So we've now, <laughs> we've now got to make sure that we, uh, we build on what we've achieved really. pub has an absolute, absolutely fo focal part to play in, our, in the social life of our country. It's what we sell ourselves on and I just find it heartbreaking to see so many places boarded up or turned into flats. I just think it's not, it's not the right thing and we can change it. We absolutely can change it and we have to do everything we can to keep these pubs going.